In today's show, we are talking about Apple adding new audiobook services potentially to Apple One. We're talking about Intel Mac Pros. We're talking about U1 chips in Macs, compatibility for iOS 16, M2 Pro Max performance, and can you use an iPhone for YouTube? I'm Mike Cave David and I simplify Apple so that everything just works for you. And if you want the latest Apple news, leaks and rumours every weekday at 1300 UTC, like the video, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell. And I've got to make an apology first. There was no video yesterday. There was every plan for a video yesterday. But uh, this was me walking to work at a theatre yesterday because we had shows starting at like 10 in the morning. It feels super weird to be walking to a theatre or to the train to the theatre at this time in the morning. But we have early shows today, we've got schools coming in, it's the snowman. It's going to be pretty cool. So uh, it was a bit of a crazy day. Uh, it's now after midnight that I'm recording this, ready for today, I guess. Um, but yeah, so it was a crazy day. Apologies, there was no video yesterday. But we're back, full force. Let's get to some of your questions. First up comes from Daniel Corby, and this was on Twitter. iCave answers, rumour is that Apple is planning on adding audiobooks to Apple One. Would this be an additional tier or added to an existing one? And would Apple have something new to contribute to that market or just count on people wanting fewer subscriptions slash leaving Audible? Now this is a really interesting question. It looks like there's rumours bouncing around that Apple might not just be doing um, audiobooks, but also a book type subscription thing where you kind of get access to a library for some kind of subscription level. Um, I'm not 100% sure exactly what they're planning to do, but I think that Apple would have kind of some exclusivity stuff. Number one, I think they would probably incorporate things like spatial audio into it, which would be really nice and potentially even lossless for audiobooks. I know it doesn't quite make as much sense as with music, but if you can imagine just hearing someone's voice reading to you and it literally sounding like they're in the room with you, that might be what you would get from something like a lossless spatial audio audiobook. That could be quite interesting. The other sort of thing that could happen is the addition of things like sound effects using spatial audio. That would be quite cool too. But beyond that, there's also um, the potential that Apple would do a lot of audio books, maybe around the stuff that they're doing on Apple TV+. Plus. That might be another tie-in that they do to make things a little bit different. But I can certainly see them having some exclusives with people like Oprah that they're working with already. And before we move on, you asked if that would be a new subscription tier or if it would be sort of built into Apple One. It might be that Apple One gets a slight price increase because if you're on the premier plan and you're okay with that as it is, you probably don't mind a little bit extra if you're getting more services. That's probably what Apple is banking on here. As well, of course, as the switches. Next up, Evan Rogers asks, I gave answers. I see that rumors are picking up again of one last Intel Mac Pro refresh this year. Do you think it will happen as it will require an entirely new motherboard? And yet there has definitely been more talk about getting another Mac Pro coming this year. Uh, I personally don't see it happening. Uh, main reasons, as you say, it needs a new motherboard. I don't think that Apple has any real excitement about giving more money to Intel, especially with the the advertising campaigns that Intel has been running against Apple and very specifically targeting Apple and in ways that don't really make any sense because they're talking about features of laptops that people make using an Intel chip that have nothing to do with the fact that Intel is inside it. Uh, there's never any mention of um, performance. That's something you'll notice very quickly when you uh, are looking for it in Intel's ads. So I think uh, even if there's like a financial penalty for not maybe fulfilling a contract, I think Apple would probably be more happy to do that than to create another Intel Mac because it's probably going to cost them more in development than whatever the penalty is for not fulfilling the contract. Next up, James Apple asks, why doesn't the M series of Macs or iPads have the U1 chip since the next generation AirPods Pro are gonna have them? Because for all we know, the U1 chip is actually only gonna be there for location data. We don't know that it's gonna be used for sending audio over. It's something that has been speculated by a lot of people. We've talked about it. A lot of other people have. Uh, I think Rene might have talked about it. It's certainly a possibility and if it does happen it could well still just be branded as uh, AirPlay. 
could well still just be branded as airplay because airplay means different things in different places if you airplay something to a home pod or airplay it to your apple tv all your apple tv is doing if it's something from youtube for example is grabbing the link and grabbing it directly uh, and the airplay is then just telling you what to play rather than sending it which means that you can then do something else with your phone um, whereas in other cases you could be directly streaming from your phone to Apple TV or a HomePod it's a little bit confusing like that but I think that opens the door for them to just call you one also airplay it might just be that you can't stream lossless from an iPad to the AirPods straight away. Maybe that will wait for the next generation. Because I don't think that the U1 chip has been put into the iPhone for the streaming, but the fact that it's there and could work for it is an advantage that already exists. Alan B Unboxings and News asks, IK Vances, do you think that Apple would announce iOS 16 with compatibility with iPhones 7 and 7 Plus and newer? Yep, that makes a lot of sense. That's kind of what we've been expecting. So the uh, the 5SE, like the iPhone 5 version that was an SE later, uh, that would drop uh, compatibility this year. Same with the iPhone 6S and the 6S Plus, and also the iPad Air 2 and the fifth generation iPad, all would lose the latest OS support this year. But then everyone thought that last year as well, and they, uh, they hung around. So it depends on what Apple is adding to iOS 16. If it's something that they can't handle. Also, IK answers. Hey Dave, do do you think the late MacBook Air will be discontinued or compatible with the macOS in June in the beta and the final versions in September or October? Um, if you mean the latest ones, yes, 100%. You're going to have a, a good few years of support on those, probably five to six. Um, so I wouldn't worry if you're looking at buying one now. You're going to get plenty of support on them. Um, I think the M2 will be obviously an extra year support but that's not here yet if you need a macbook grab one now and also i cave answers hey dave i think for ios 16 the generation 7 ipod touch will be discontinued and we'll just get security updates for ios 15 and again yeah this makes sense apple's not just abandoning stuff that's on ios 15 uh, they will still get security updates they will still get that kind of thing what they won't get is the big new feature updates and that's okay i think they've done their time Fred the Bread asks, I'm not sure if you've made a video on this yet, but I was wondering what you think the M2 Pro or M2 Max will look like in terms of performance compared to the M1 Pro and Max. So no, actually we haven't done uh, a video on this yet. As soon as we see M2, we will have a decent idea, but we can kind of extrapolate out a little bit from the, um, from the iPhone processors because the cores that are in the current iPhones are the ones that will go into M2 which means that we can kind of see what the performance will be like already. I think it's fair to say that we're likely to get the same uh, core layout, so it's probably going to be uh, the eight performance cores and two uh, efficiency cores in terms of CPU cores, same numbers on the uh, GPUs as well, which means you're probably going to be looking at around about a 20% performance bump. That would be my best guess. However, it looks like the GPU cores are much faster in the next generation, which means possibly up to 50% faster graphics, which is a massive jump compared to what you get with NVIDIA or AMD year on year. And Thomas Rabenstein asks, this is again from Twitter, I cave Dave, for some time now I've been preparing the equipment for creating my own YouTube videos for my work as an author. If you listen to the creative YouTubers, most of them use relatively expensive camera systems for recording. I'm of the opinion now that the iPhone can achieve a very acceptable 4K in video recordings, even for professional clips. I'm currently working my way through the tutorials of some filmmakers who only work with smartphones. I would be interested in your opinion on the subject. Well, you're watching me on an iPhone right now, and admittedly the lighting in here isn't perfect, but it's not too bad. Um, I use quite cheap lights. That kind of makes more difference than what the sensor is you're using, as long as you've got a reasonable sensor. Um, so I use the, the main shooter on the iPhone 12 Pro Max. That is what I film pretty much all my videos on. If you look at what Rene Ritchie does, um, I think he uses his iPhone for pretty much all of his B-roll shooting. He's got like a Canon cinema camera that he uses for his main shot, but he also uses his iPhone, cuts it in. It doesn't look out of place at all. So yes, 100% you can. Um, what you will need to do is make sure that you've got a decent audio 
solution, uh, whether that's recording directly into the Mac, which is what I do, using the big microphone that's down here, this fella, or if you prefer to record into your iPhone using an external microphone that's plugged in using uh, a Lightning 2 headphone jack, uh, which is one option, or you can use something like a Zoom as an external recorder. But yeah, the video is going to look fine. Um, I use literally the most compressed version that Apple has, the HEVC um, video files, which is the like high efficiency format. So that loses a lot of information already. And then I don't know how to color grade very well. For example, in today's video in particular, I've managed to have the color temperature changing all the way through. I might have to start using Filmic Pro again because you can lock it all off on there. Um, the autofocus is amazing on this thing. However, if you're in the native camera app and you don't lock stuff off, which I don't because I want it to be able to autofocus on me, you do get that kind of color shift. You can, you can get around it, but you do need to use something like Filmic Pro in order to do that. But yeah it's perfectly acceptable for anything on YouTube. And we have talked about the way that I make the videos uh, in the past, so you can find those videos on the channel. But if you've got any questions, again, hashtag IKVance is down in the comment section, and uh, I will answer them in the next one. So thank you for joining me, guys. Don't forget, uh, you can join the Patreons over here. These guys are awesome. Um, by going to ikavedave.com forward slash Patreon, or slash merch if you want to grab yourself some Cupertino goodness. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.